Hey fellow lab rats, this is Rebecca from the Lab Rat YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be going over three indirect bilirubin practice problems. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so before we get into the indirect bilirubin calculation, let's just recap and review uh, bilirubin as a whole. So if you have not already checked out my liver function uh, lecture, um, please go ahead and check that out before you get into this particular video. Um, I will link it down in the description of this video for you. But just in summation, um, so both total, total bilirubin and direct or uh, conjugated bilirubin are um, measured uh, directly by a clinical chemistry analyzer. And then the indirect uh, bilirubin um, is produced by a calculation. So the total bilirubin reference range um, is 0 0.2 to 1.0 milligrams per deciliter. And so when I say reference range, I mean this is the range uh, for a normal patient. A conjugated or direct bilirubin levels are, um, again, are they able to be measured directly by the analyzer. And the reason for this is because uh, it's because they are water soluble and react directly with the bilirubin assay reagent that's used. So the normal reference range for conjugated or direct bilirubin uh, for a normal patient is 0 to 0 0.2 milligrams per deciliter. Unconjugated or indirect bilirubin does not react directly with the bilirubin assay reagent because it is not water soluble. So the indirect bilirubin level is thereby calculated. Uh, so this actually should remind you um, potentially of um, indirect LDL cholesterol. So um, in my lipids and, li and lipoproteins lecture, we discuss that LDL cholesterol is usually not directly tested, but formed, uh, the result is a uh, is produced from a calculation. So the same goes for unconjugated or indirect bilirubin. It's produced from a calculation, and uh, I will go ahead and share the calculation with you on the next slide. Okay, so the indirect bilirubin calculation is as follows. So you take total bilirubin equals direct or conjugated bilirubin plus the indirect or unconjugated bilirubin. Um, and you notice here I have in parentheses measured and calculated. So the difference here, so how this works is if um, a patient comes in and gets a total bilirubin, a direct bilirubin, and an in, in indirect bilirubin uh, level ordered on them. Okay, so practice problem number one. So I have gone ahead and included the calculation up here for us. So uh, total bilirubin is equal to direct bilirubin plus the indirect bilirubin. This particular patient's total bilirubin is 0 0.2 milligrams per deciliter. And if you recall, the normal reference range for total bilirubin, it should be uh, 0 0.2 uh, to about one milligrams per deciliter. So this particular patient is normal for total bili. So the direct bilirubin for this practice problem patient uh, is 0 0.1 milligrams per deciliter. Direct bilirubin, which is normal reference range, should be 0 to 0 0.3 milligrams per deciliter. So this is also normal. And then, uh, of course, this, this practice problem is asking you what the indirect bilirubin is for this patient. So this is a very simple calculation, but we'll go ahead and show it to you. So total bilirubin is 0 0.2, so we're going to do 0 0.2 milligrams per deciliter equals the direct or conjugated bilirubin, which is 0 0.1. Oh my goodness, that was a terrible equal sign. We'll just, <laughs> we'll just extend it there. I'm doing this with my mouth. So equal, so the direct bilirubin is 0 0.1 milligrams per deciliter. All right, plus the indirect or unconjugated bilirubin, which is what we're trying to solve. So let's just use some algebraic uh, letters here. So here's, we're just gonna call this X. You can call it whatever letter you would like. Um, I'm just gonna go with X, so plus X. So how do we solve for X? So what we need to do is subtract the 0 0.1 from both sides. So 0 0.2 minus 0 0.1 is 0 0.1. So that is 0 0.1 milligrams per deciliter, and that is your indirect bilirubin level. Uh, so um, 
do? The indirect uh, bilirubin level, uh, normal reference range is 0 0.2 to 0 0.8 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, so this particular patient is a little bit lower than that, so it's 0 0.1. Uh, this is insignificant, so um, if it's a little less than the normal reference range, that's acceptable, that's fine. Uh, it's only an issue when uh, the bilirubin is elevated uh, higher than the normal reference range. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, so for practice problem number two, again, I have included this up for us, uh, the calculation up for us. So total bilirubin equals direct bilirubin plus indirect uh, or unconjugated bilirubin. Uh, so for this particular patient, their total bilirubin is 7.0 milligrams per deciliter. That is definitely elevated, right? So it should be 0 0.2 to 1 milligram per deciliter. The direct bilirubin for this patient is 4.1 milligrams per deciliter, and that is actually elevated as well. So it should be from 0 to 0 0.3, and this patient is 4.1. And then, of course, we're trying to figure out the indirect bilirubin level, which is X. So let's just plug and chug here. So total bilirubin, so that's 7.0 milligrams per deciliter equals the direct bilirubin, which is 4.1, 4.1 milligrams per deciliter plus our unknown, which is the indirect. So we'll just label this X here. So all we have to do is just subtract the direct from both sides. Milligrams per deciliter minus, we'll just put 4.1 here. So 7 uh, minus 4.1 is 2.9. So 2.9 milligrams per deciliter is our indirect bilirubin level. Um, so this is also elevated, all right? So this particular patient obviously has some issues going on. Uh, they're probably jaundiced, which means that they have yellowing to their skin and a yellowing to their the sclera of their eyes, which is like the white portion of their eyeball. Um, their sample is very likely icteric. So that means uh, when um, spun down, the serum or the plasma is going to have like a darkish, yellowish, can be greenish or brownish coloration to that serum or plasma. Um, so all of these are elevated. So total, total bili is elevated, direct bili is elevated, and indirect bili is elevated. This is very classically a hepatic jaundice situation. Uh, this means that there is an issue directly with the liver. Um, so recall in pre and post hepatic situations, uh, so pre and post hepatic jaundice situations, uh, this is not an impairment of the liver. It can be something else. Um, but this very classically, all these elevated is very, is, is, there's obviously something going on with uh, with the liver. So this is a hepatic jaundice. Okay, let's go to the next one. Alrighty, so practice problem number three. And again, here is our calculation. Total bilirubin equals direct plus indirect bilirubin. Um, so if you want to pause this uh, and go ahead and try to do this calculation yourself, you can do that. I will give the answer here momentarily. If not, that's okay. Um, so this patient's uh, total bilirubin is 17.0 milligrams per deciliter. Goodness sakes, that's very, very elevated. Uh, their direct bilirubin level is 16.7 milligrams per deciliter, super duper elevated. So recall total bilirubin should be 0 0.2 to 1 milligrams per deciliter and direct bilirubin should be 0 to 0 0.3 milligrams per deciliter. So this patient obviously has got something bad going on. And their indirect bilirubin is what we're trying to solve for, so we'll call that X. So let's just plug these numbers back into the calculation. So the total bilirubin is 17.0 milligrams per deciliter. And then we're going to put an equal sign, and now we have the direct bilirubin, so 16.7 16 .7 milligrams per deciliter. And then, of course, we have our unknown to the indirect, so plus x. And how do we solve for x? We're just going to subtract 16.7 from both sides here. So 17 minus 16.7 is 0 0.3. 0 0.3 milligrams per deciliter. All right. And that is our indirect bilirubin. 
Okay, all right, so what's happening here? So both the total bilirubin and the direct bilirubin are elevated, but if you notice here that our indirect level, which is 0 0.3 milligrams per deciliter, uh, this is a normal indirect. Um, so indirect should be 0 0.2 to 0 0.8 uh, milligrams per deciliter, so this is within normal range. So this is normal. Okay, so what does this mean? All right, so um, they probably do have jaundice, of course, um, but is it a pre, a post, or just a regular hepatic jaundice? Uh, so my assumption here is probably it's going to be a post-hepatic uh, jaundice. Uh, so uh, the indirect bilirubin is normal, and the total and the direct bilirubin are elevated. Um, and, and these post-hepatic um, jaundice situations happen when there's not an issue with the liver, um, but with something else. So this is likely caused by an obstruction. So either by uh, a tumor or some sort of stone that is causing this. Alrighty, hopefully these practice problems helped you. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like and make sure to subscribe to my channel for more educational laboratory content. And as always, if you have any questions about this specific video or if you have any suggestions on what other videos I should include on my channel, please feel free to leave those in the comments section. Until next time.